Ultimate Step-by-Step -step Guide LC1020E. Now that the device is ready, let's press the power button to turn it on. This device's measuring function can be switched by the first auto. Now it's in resistance measurement mode. Can change it to the capacitance, inductance, impedance, and automatic measurement. You can switch its secondary parameters by the near. It includes D, Q, X value, and S or equivalent series resistance and phase angle. Hold down the OK button to enter the settings and press down to scroll. You will see calibration setting at the bottom. Let's taking out the metal calibration plate. Insert it into the H pot and L elpo slots. Now we enter the calibration settings and here is for short circuit calibration. Press the OK. You can see the calibration done. Now remove it. Select open circuit. Press OK to test. After completing short and open calibration, long press the OK to exit calibration and press OK again to exit settings. Now we take out the Kelvin clip, literal down to, insert it into the slot, and right push to tighten. The Kelvin clip has red and black test leads. These two simply clamp both ends of the component and we can start test. Now let's take out an electrolytic capacitor. You can see it's 470 microfarad, 200 volts. This is generally used for power supply filtering since the power supply frequency is relatively low. We'll set the frequency to 100 Hertz. Set the level up to 0.6 volt, offset to zero, and auto range. Now we press the left button, switch to capacitance test mode. The right button can cycle through the sub-parameters. We get Q quality factor. The top line shows the actual value, and below, it shows a quality parameter. Finish setting the parameters. We connect the black clip to capacitor's negative terminal and the red clip to the positive terminal. You can see the capacitance is 417 microfarads. Looks like it's drifted a bit, but we're still good within 20% tolerance. The Q value reads 21.9. That's a little low. We can also press the right button to see the other parameters. Its ESSER is 0.17 ohms. X reactance is negative 381 ohms. D dissipation factor is 0.04 over constant. Now let's try a color band resistor. Switch to resistance. You can see that the current reading is OL infinity. Now use the Kelvin clip. Clamp the ends of the resistor. We can see that resistance is 90 ohms. We can also switch the subparameter values to check. Now switch to inductance measurement. Testing inductance. Attach the red and black clips to the two ends of the inductor. We can see the current. Inductance is 21.6 microhenry. And we can also check the other subparameters. Its Q quality factor is 0.015. When we want to see the readings in the display, inconvenient. We can press the hold. This will freeze the readings. You can also use the shortcut keys below to switch parameters. Now press frac frequency. You will see the number changed frequency. When we select a different frequency, the top readings will change too. Now you can assign it to your own circuit. Press the level button to switch the level parameters for testing. We have offset button here. Offset and level are related. We will talk about this later. This is the speed button. It controls how frequently the measurements refresh. There are three levels, slow, medium, and fast. You can see that when it's on fast, the readings on the screen update faster. This is the range button. We can manually select the range. Usually we use auto mode. So why is auto range recommended? Because when we switch ranges while not in impedance mode, it will cause the readings to appear abnormal. By now, we have understood its general functions. Let's go on. Long press the OK to enter sorting. We can see the first item is sorting in the menu. Press OK. It shows a value, which is the parameter of our current test mode. Now, let's go back. Long press the OK twice. Back to the main interface. Switch the mode to capacitance. And then we long press the OK. Enter the sorting again to set the capacitor's sorting parameters. We see this capacitor is 470 microfarads. 200 volt. Its standard tolerance is 20%. Let's set it to 10% to try it out. Current standard value is 470 microfarads. 10% tolerance. We set the worn type to OK. And turn on the volume and LED. Finish setting. Long press the OK to return to the main interface. Long press the hold to enter sorting mode. We take out the capacitor. Connect to the capacitor's positive and negative terminal. The red light start flashes and alarm. The counter shows red 001 when it fails. And the current tolerance TOL is 13%. We replace an electrolytic capacitor. Test it again. Use Kelvin clip to connect capacitors positive and negative. The green light will turn on if the test passes. It shows OK here. The green light flashes and shows green 001 when tests succeed. 
This is for sorting setting. Include three sorting modes. Capacitance measurement sorting. Inductance measurement sorting and resistance measurement sorting. When we need a DC offset during measurement, we can use the offset button to set the bias. But the bias setting is related to the level. So after setting the bias, the level here can only go up to 0.3 volt. If we're outdoors or traveling and forgot to bring the Kelvin clip, no worries. We can use probes to test. Just connect the probes positive and negative leads to the correct terminals. Then start the test because testing with probes lacks the guard leading to less accurate results. So, if possible, we recommend using the Kelvin clip for testing. When the Kelvin clip can't be used on a PCB component or SM components, we can use probes instead. This is a 244 resistor on the PCB. Let's see the reading. Its measured value is 239K. Switch to capacitor testing and set the secondary parameter to D. Connect the probes to both ends of the capacitor. The current reading is 0.98 microfarads. Now for inductor testing, set the secondary parameter to Q. Connect the probes to both ends of the inductor. The current reading is 69 microhenries. This shows all these components are working normally within expected reading ranges. Finally, if you can't tell whether a component is a resistor or an inductor, just press the first button. To switch the auto mode, you just need to clamp the Kelvin clips on both ends of the component, and it will automatically identify the component's parameters and name. 